So my understanding that is Athena. That is incredible. Incredible. Isn't that something? It's amazing. Well, Joan and I are in downtown Nashville. We are doing some things a little bit different today, aren't we? We're doing some walking. We're doing some walking, <laughs> and uh, we're calling this Nashville on a budget. So when you come to Nashville, not everything is expensive. Yeah, I know there's all the fun stuff down on Broadway and all the great places to go. We'll put at the end of this, we'll put a, a playlist of all the fun things that you can do. But today we're looking at what you can do at a budget. And we're in a very, very interesting place. This is the Tennessee Museum. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, it is quite a structure. So there it is. We're gonna go inside and see what we can find. It is, I hear it's a really cool place. So we've come into the first area. This is uh, called the First People. So we're gonna walk around here and uh, see what we can find. There's a lot of uh, video that is going on that I'm gonna be very cautious about here and just kind of show you some snapshots of it. But uh, then we have a lot of real, real interesting artifacts. So we're gonna kind of catch some of the video and get the history that we're seeing in here. And then uh, we'll show you um, uh, just some of the other things that they have inside. So we're at First People right now, the First People of Tennessee. And uh, we are going to learn a little bit about them. And um, we'll uh, kind of continue the tour as we go around through the museum. This place is incredible. As we start looking around, you can start seeing some of the implements that date back, gosh, 13,000 years BC. And I have no idea. A mastodon jaw. Look at that. Now, let me give you a for instance just how big that is. Here's my hand. That big giant mastodon jaw. And it came from uh, Bellevue, Tennessee. Wow. And you kind of see who was who here. First Peoples Communities. Look at this. So, where were the Cherokees at, Jim? Does it say? Katoa. There you go. Here was the capital. Right here. There was the capital of the Cherokees here in Tennessee. 1730s. Your grandmother was full blooded Cherokee? Yes. Full blooded. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're going to try to trace some of that back. So this is, I guess, Joan, because North Carolina is right over here. That's why you see the Cherokee in this area. And of course they go all the way down, oh my goodness, all the way over here into Alabama. How about that? I'm an, I'm an eighth. You're an eighth, sure, that's right, you're an eighth. Was full. Was half, was full. And you're an eighth, that's right, you're an eighth. And we're hoping we can trace it back since the Cherokees are a maternal society. And uh, we're hoping we can do some tracing. We've got some books and we're just a looking. Interesting, look at this. Some, I mean, these are, these go back to 60 CE. We call that AD now, I guess. Old pipes, look at that. Interesting. Mortar and pestle. Somewhere between 8,000 and 1,000 BC. Wow, look at that, Joan. Some old stuff. All right, early Tennessee before 1900. So the Europeans have come, and you can start seeing some of the old early expression furniture, shift robes and those types of things. <laughs> Okay, I've got family that participated in the making of those things. Many of you know I'm from the Virginia, Tennessee line in Bristol. Scott Irish. Neils go back a long way. 
I'll put a video here at the top of when I went to Abingdon to find my three times grandfather, if you're interested, a couple years ago. Go to the old home place. Is this silver? 1830s to 1840s, and then the old, see if I can find something out about the, the muskets that are up there, if you see those. Okay, those are 1820 to 1870, James L. Harris long rifles. Look at that, interesting. Oh, and for all you quilters, look at this beautiful quilt work. Remember my granny and aunts making those? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And this just kind of give you the spance of this place. Look at this. It is quite substantial. What do we have over here, Joan? A print shop? Based on a 1720s common press. This would be like the ones Benjamin Franklin used, probably something like that. My dad was a newspaper man. I remember seeing lead type in a modern fashion, but of course not like this. That's what brought us to Georgia from Virginia. Look at that old press. Can you imagine making a newspaper on that thing every day? Early Tennessee print shop, 1790s. Look at that. Well, love him or hate him, he is the Battle of Andrew Jackson. There is his bust. On the positive side, he was instrumental in the Battle of New Orleans. 1814. And he was quite the general. I'll put a link up here at the top where we went to the Hermitage a few years ago. His home here in Nashville. And yes, he does have a kind of an ugly past to him. I'll leave that up to you to do the research. But look at these old muskets. Look at this. 1860 to 1860. 1808, excuse me, to 1816. French swords. Look at that. That's, when you compare that to modern warfare today, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Look how small they were. Look at this coat. That might, Joan, that might fit my 15 year old, our 15 year old grandson. Just shows you how small people were back then. Look at that. And that was uh, William Graham. And it wouldn't be complete without coming here and seeing things from Sam Houston, of course. Again, the War of 1812, and of course the Alamo. Here's what's amazing. Look at this. All right, history buffs, get excited. There is the sword and the scabbard that belonged to Sam Houston. How about that? Look at that. That is amazing. Portrait of Sam Houston, if you haven't seen him. All right, how about some Davy Crockett memorabilia? Look at this old knife. Knife, powder horn, and snuff box. Look at that. Look at the letter penmanship by Davy Crockett. Incredible. That is absolutely incredible. All right, look at here. Nathan Bedford Forrest. All right. He too has an interesting past. But my favorite quote is from Forrest Gump. I may be related to him or something like that. <laughs> Sorry about that. The Civil War display here is incredible. I mean, look at this flag. And you can actually see, I imagine those are probably bullet holes. I, ha I can't confirm that. You can see them. 
running down through there from the Battle of Fort Henry. And then if you're a student of the Civil War, the Battle of Shiloh, young John Clem. You read about him in history at the Battle of Shiloh. He was who they called the Little Drummer Boy. Think about this, nine years old. I've been up to Appomattox back in the day before we started the channel. Some interesting things. Union Cavalry. Look at the old cannon pieces here. Where did this come from? A 12 pounder Napoleon. That was Confederate. And then this would be more local the Battle of Franklin and the Battle of Nashville. Now, the story wouldn't be complete if you came to Tennessee and you didn't see a steel. <laughs> and of course, the story of prohibition during the period. We're, uh, we're going up to 1945 now, some real interesting things. Here, I'll show you this, this is kind of neat. I have an old phone like this, uh, very, very similar. My grandmother lived in a little area right outside of Bristol, a little country area called Lime Hill. And uh, she was called Mama Shug. And she was the operator, and I used to go up as a little boy uh, after they had put modern phones up there and used to play on the old cord board she had. Of course, you got to hear about Sergeant Alvin York. He was from here. Huge, huge display for Alvin York, including his medals. Look at that. Is this a Model T? Look at this. Those are wooden wheels, Jen. Those, really? Yeah, they're wooden. Okay. The model, the Model T. Yeah, the spokes are wooden. Completely restored. Look at this. I think Henry Ford. They asked him what color he you could have the Model T, and he said any color you want as long as it's black. <laughs> Isn't that something? Look at that. Oh, look at the old radio over here, Chun. 1930. I bet that's heard the Grand Ole Opry on Saturday night more than once. So we're coming up into the modernization. Up into pre-1921 on. Old icebox. I know I keep talking about Granny up in the mountains. I remember Granny having one of these old wood fire cook stoves. <laughs> I'm not that old. It's just that's the way it was back with the old hill people. And then of course we got modern stuff. Joan, you remember a refrigerator like that growing up? Yep, we did too. I don't ever remember an electric stove like that, but I remember as a little boy I remember mom having one of these things. She wouldn't she wouldn't let me get near it. <laughs> They were a death trap. So this is what up to, do they give any time frame here? It's got 30s. I'm going to say 30s to the 50s probably is when you saw these types of things. And not a whole lot changed in 20 years because like I said, we were born in the 50s and I remember that. All right, are you 1950s fans? You can, and later, from Cabbage Patch Dolls on. Of course, that's out of Cleveland, Georgia. Look at the old TV. Oh my goodness, look at that thing. That is an old Philco, wow. More World War II memorabilia. Oh, look at here. Uh, one of my favorite videos from the Grammys. I love that. Of course, you got to look at music history, right? B.B. King, Elvis. Joan, here's Dolly. <laughs> here's some Dolly. And you got Loretta. Oh my goodness. 
You remember going to Hurricane Mill? That was before we started doing video. Loretti. Chet Atkins. Look at that. Look at that dress. Isn't that something? Patsy Klein. Yeah. We haven't been to the Patsy Klein Museum. Uh, from Memphis. You probably saw that when we went to... There's a video. I'll put that up as well when I went to uh, the Stax Records and... Booker T and the MGs, and that's where Middle Georgia's Middle Georgia's names, one of his biggies, Otis Redding, recorded there. Well, John, what do you think? It was very interesting, very interesting about Tennessee and everything that's happened in Tennessee. And we got it, a little bit of everything. It's uh, you know, it starts out from literally the Paleo period to present. And um, you saw the video. We're going to do some other things today. We're on the outside grounds here. And you can just see so much more that they have here to look at. But we're going to call this one quits for this as we walk by the pretty water. And uh, we've got another stop or two we're going to try to make. There's downtown Nashville. And the farmer's market over there. All right, there's the, there's the Tennessee Museum you can see over there in the distance. And we're heading in here to the farmer's market. And uh, I understand there's vendors and things like that, but we're actually looking for lunch. So I'm hungry, Joan. I am too. You're hungry too? A little, yeah. This is, boy, this is quite a food court here. You've got a little bit of everything. Breweries, ice cream, oriental foods, coffees. There's your coffee place over there. And... My favorite, good old barbecue. This is going to be Tennessee style, which I like Tennessee style, with sweet sauce. And Jones got pulled pork with green beans and baked beans. And I've got Cajun coleslaw and some kind of interesting grits. I think this is going to be some kind of yummy. They even have sushi here. Can you believe that? At the farmer's market. All right, we're going to see what else we can find. Was it good, Joan? It's delicious. All right, barbecue. Joan and I have been wanting to come here for a while. Vandy's off to the left, and what's in front of me? The Parthenon. Would you look at that? Isn't that incredible? I've always wanted to come here. The grounds are just absolutely breathtaking. Would you look at this? This is incredible. And then over there is Vandy. Just look at the size of this place. Look at this. Keep going, Joan, I'll catch up with you. Okay. Look at this. It is huge. It goes and goes and goes. This is amazing. <laughs> look at that. All right, and the grounds are spectacular really something really really something look at all this grounds are crazy all right i'm going to catch up with Joni up here on the bank and uh, we're going to go inside and uh, see what this is all about so upstairs you would have come through these massive massive doors i'm going to guess there may be 40 plus feet in height and again this was to be a replica of the original Parthenon and what's on the other side look at this oh my goodness that is some understanding that is Athena that is incredible incredible isn't that something amazing so when you come in from where Athena is at here is a mock-up of the sculptures that would be placed on the front and the back I guess those were the concepts maybe incredible they got them front and back they got them over there but unfortunately the you ought to see these doors are incredible probably a good 
eight or ten inches thick. It's just huge. Let's see if I can get here out of the sun where you just kind of see these doors are just the structure is just incredible. Uh, I'll try to brighten it up for you. It's just amazing. You can see how thick they are. Where's my hand? Probably a good 10, 12 inches thick. And then you can see over here more of the sculpture pieces. There you go. That's shown on the front and the back. The concept. And then we'll go back in here to where Athena is placed. You get a, another view of that. Didn't see it from the back, but there she is from the back. You see the back of the shield. And of course the big snake supposedly, supposedly represents the people of Athens that she's supposed to protect. I guess that's part of the mythology. It's really something. It is quite the structure. There we go. That's where we just came from. The sun coming over the top gives it quite an interesting view, doesn't it? So you can only imagine what this was like during the centennial so long ago. Out there was the giant pyramid and then they had buildings all over the place here. All kinds of exhibition buildings. It's really something. Big lake over here to the right. Big open free park. Well, Joan, that was quite a spectacle, wasn't it? It was. That's was amazing. I had no idea. I mean, we came from the outside of the building. <laughs> and it's saw, quite a lot to see inside. Uh, and then saw the giant Athena, which was completed in, I think, I think I said 1990, somewhere thereabout, something like that, added on. But it's something. Here, I'll turn the camera around one more time. There you go. There's the view. Really, really some kind of a place. If you come to here, it's free to walk around on the outside. Inside was just, you know, $10 or $8 if you're a senior, $8 for kids. Worth the sight. Really, really quite a spectacular place. And over there is all the, the gardens and the lake and all kinds of things just where you can just walk around beautiful beautiful grounds really something all right so we're here at Mimi's we're gonna call it a day we had a really good time I've got me a blueberry waffle cone and my blueberries are about to come out Joan's got a milkshake a vanilla milkshake good good yummy mm -hmm. uh, the Pantheon was amazing uh, very inexpensive beautiful if we'd had more time we'd have probably hung out on the grounds today but we wanted to miss the rush hour coming out of downtown and uh, the Tennessee, the Tennessee State Museum. I enjoyed that. Boy, that was really, that really was a cool. A lot of good things to see. So Mimi's is right here at the corner of McGavick and Music Valley Drive. The camper is right up there. Um, right over there is the Gaylord and the big mall and Opry and all that stuff. So we're just going to enjoy our ice cream. Joni and I are in downtown Nashville. No, it's not noisy. No, there's not a lot of people. No, I'm not telling the truth. <laughs> Look at this. Friday night, it is crazy. I wanted to show you a couple excerpts here of some of the acts that we're playing when we were down here in Nashville. Uh, they were really amazing. Unfortunately, I can't put these on YouTube for copyright purposes, but if you go out to today's blog at ilovervlife.com. I've got some 30 second, one minute shots of some of these acts and they were spectacular. The amount of talent here in downtown Nashville on Broadway, it just amazes me at the, the quality. So I hope you would go out there. We, uh, Joan and I had just a blast listening to these acts. This is what Broadway looks like on a Friday night. It is nuts. We're having so much fun. 